Welcome back, y'all. It's Two Aprons. I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons. Oh, I did that twice. Oh, well. <laughs> We're doing seared steaks and aioli today. And it's accompanied by crispy gnocchi and sauteed green beans. As you know, we're going to go through the stuff in the box, the unboxing, as they say, the unveiling. <laughs> the unboxing. I didn't know there was an official term. Like this it. is some fanciness. This is a shallot. Ooh, what is this? Oh, these are, mm. Oh. I smell those. Those are this fresh. This is red pepper um, flakes, crushed red pepper flakes. Mm, yummy, yummy. Y'all know what these are. Classic. Classic. Some beautiful fresh green beans. Got a little bit of the unknown. My this is our mayonnaise that is going to be the base of our aioli. Wasn't unknown. She knew what it was. <laughs> These are some capers. Oh, look at this. I love oh. capers. They taste like the ocean. I love pasta. This is potato gnocchi. I learned tonight that gnocchi can be made out of a lot of things. I've only ever made it from scratch once, and it was potato-based. So I assumed that gnocchi was typically potato-based. It can also be made out of semolina, um, whole wheat flour, all kinds of other stuff. They said breadcrumbs, eggs, and cheese really? sometimes. Yeah. Wow, the breadcrumbs is amazing. <laughs> it's kind of a cross between, it's a pasta dumpling. A pasta dumpling, all right. Yeah. That kind of tells us what that is. Kind of. We're need this. Most times we need a cutting board, so I'll just get that out there. I think our first step is to fill a pot of, uh, with some water, salted water. You know how they like to always put salt <laughs> in the water, so fill a pot with some salted water. Probably three out of the five times so that's been our first step. Um, so that's a pretty common one. It's right up there with preheat the oven at. <laughs> that's true and it's always 450. I don't think they've ever had us heat the oven at a lower temperature. So. That might be a unique Vegas betting pool instead of betting on horses. What's the first instruction on the... Oh I see like every instruction yeah. you bet on like what the new thing was. The, um, You'd make a game out of it. That one item would not be. It'd be like four rooms. So those dudes bet on the lighter. My lucky lighter is going to light, what was it, ten times, I think? I want to say it was ten times in a row, yeah. So that's salted. That's good to go. Um, then we're going to prep some ingredients. Ooh, wash and dry the green beans. I actually already washed those. Oh, did you? Um, so those are good to go. Okay, then what's the next step with these guys? Um, what we're going to do with those is you're going to discard the ends, both ends. Um, I used to snap beans. <laughs> Um, way back in the day, and so actually what you do is you can just snap off the end. You don't actually need yeah. a tool or anything. Both and ends or one end? Both or? ends, and then I always thought you snap them in the middle. Um, obviously break them in you, half? Or? Yeah, you don't have to. Sometimes they're really long when you get them mm -hmm. fresh. Oh, no, um, I see what you're saying. They really are. So, so pretend that you have to still <laughs> wash yours. You know, we pre-prepped ours. The, um, boom, boom. <laughs> And this is a um, great thing, like we used to make the, um, my daughter do this and my nephew, um, whenever we would make this, uh, we'd have the kids snap the beans. Oh. I always thought it was kind of fun. Apparently they hated it, I found out. Um, it's kind of fun, it depends how many. I imagine the number's how many. You doing like 50 beans and that's like, oh, okay, a little activity for a little bit, or is it like 8 million beans? And two days later, you're like, I hate you. Why do you do this to me? Two days later, no. It, was it wasn't me later. who did whatever it is we're being punished <laughs> for. Uh, no, it was never two days later. Um, it was typically a pretty big bag because these do kind of cook down like you'll think you have a lot and then you get home and it makes like, you know, the exact right amount where you thought you were going to have a month mm -hmm. left over. Um, so yeah, it, it was a lot. That happens to be a lot. I'm like, oh, this will be so many. I'll have so many left over. It's like, dude, you don't have nothing left over. It's all gone. It's also kind of like a little bit meditative. If you have a really big bag of them, you can kind of get going, and it's like very rhythmic and like soothing. Like in New Orleans, we used to go to this little restaurant, and we'd watch the guy shuck the oysters, and he was so good at it. He'd take his oh, little knife and okay. so fast. What restaurant was that? I think it was like New Orleans House or something, or the one right across the street from the Omni. I don't remember what it was called. Oh, the name escapes me. That was a that the was oyster an oyster house. <laughs> was it called the Oyster House? That was one we visited, but I'm not sure that was that one. I am messing up the name. I apologize. I'll have to find that later. We'll have to, uh, you know, pay more attention next time we're in New Orleans. <laughs> I did. It's hard. It's hard. Oh, look at those. Just so much fun to be had there, you know. Give me these. Give me these. <laughs> yep. What's up next? All right, so we've got those done. Um, I think next we're going to mutilate some garlic. Yummy. So that will be fun. Oh, actually, we're going to peel and thinly slice the shallot. Oh, okay. So this is a shallot. I have, I, like, I have not verified this. I did not look this up today. 
please don't like harangue me too badly <laughs> what? if if I'm wrong. Um, but I have heard that a shallot is kind of like a cross between garlic and an onion. Um, uh. But it's a very mild flavor. Like what we'll do with this one is we'll discard the ends, we'll peel it. And what did you do there? You slit something? What was that? So I just took the knife and I ran it gently down um, the uh. middle to kind of slit the skin just to make peeling it a little bit easier. Um, so it just comes off like a little that. more easily. I like that. That way. I need then, new. Yeah. Thank you. And then this is, like I said, this is a very like mild flavor. Um, this is not like eating an onion. So when you peel it, when you um, when you peel it, after you peel it, when you chop it thinly, um, it's really gonna cook down well and like not at all be an overwhelming flavor in your dish. So don't be afraid of it. It looks like a lot, and you're like, wow, if that's onion, that could be strong, but it's not. I was thinking it needed a bigger bowl, but no. I'm thinking ahead. It's too, we're going to make some garlic paste, and that garlic paste we're going to add right here. That's going to make your mayonnaise aioli, or garlic aioli. Or, am I saying that right? Because aioli, we Googled it, comes from the word garlic and then the word oil. So we are debating. And like it, Latin or French. Or no, whatever, they were French. Yeah, it was French, I think. Okay. Um, so we are debating, does aioli typically have mayonnaise, or is it just oil based? I wonder. Okay, so now the garlic. And we like to do a bunch of garlic, so we usually kind of. So this recipe actually calls for two cloves, and one's going to be chopped up, and one's going to be smashed into a paste to add to the mayonnaise to create the aioli. The other is going to be cooked later um, with the green beans, I think, or the gnocchi, I'm not sure. Um, but like, we'll probably double those, so it'll probably be, be like at least four. Um, That's what we do. Each, maybe and once more. you chop them down, you pretty much just cut it in half, whatever's whatever. Um, let me wash my hands real quick. We forgot to put that in the unboxing, but it actually is provided. It, the garlic did come with, and they always give you plenty. Um, you so can, you're not missing out by adding this extra amount. You usually get a clove oh, let me get the other per night. box. Sorry. <laughs> and most of the time, you're not going to use a clove in a week if you're only cooking the three meals that mm -hmm. um, ours comes with. So. I like using this wider blade, just because it makes it a little bit easier. To do the little trick I'll, uh, where we smash, smash it. it, and you can help me... Uh, Besides, one of these clothes barely even counts. Look at him. He's a wee little clove. He's like a Rudy. A little Rudy. <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Am I too old? You don't know what that is? You don't like the foosball? I'm not really the biggest, like, sports whatever, but I love sports movies. Oh, I love them. I watch sports movies all the time. ESPN does some of the best documentaries. Like actual documentaries? Mm-hmm. You know, they just did that one about Michael Jordan, which I haven't watched yet. Don't, no spoilers. I haven't seen that one. I heard about it, though. Didn't Saturday Night Live do a skit or something? Oh, I think they did. Probably. They usually do. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's probably a safe bet, but I didn't see it. <laughs> um, all right. So half these we turn into a paste, and the other half we do what? The other half you're just going to roughly chop. Oh, all right. So because when you make a paste, you pretty much start by roughly chopping. I'm just going to roughly so, chop it all, and then half of it I'm going to take to the extreme. Take it to the extreme. And if you had um, a microplane... Um, typically that's where you would make mm -hmm. the paste. Again, we don't have a box grater, we don't have a microplane here, um, mm -hmm. so we just chop it up and then you can use the flat of the knife to kind of smush it against the cutting board and to mm -hmm. create a paste. Um, and oh, what that? Gerald oh. David did was he didn't actually take the ends off the garlic, which is totally fine. My sister-in-law's a dietitian. I watched her do it one time and I was like, so do you remove the ends? And she was like, nope, I usually just leave them in there, which is obvious because I just watched her do it. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously those can be eaten, and yep, they were fine. Yummy, I yummy. actually noticed it. Yummy, yummy. It's just a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, I think we're ready for the gnocchi. Is that what goes in there? No, oh, no, no. we're we not blanch. putting that in there yet. She is right. We blanch these first. Do you want to go ahead and do that, or do you want to wait? Because those are, like, they're done once. What? Once they're out of that water. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you set the timer for? Um, so we're going to blanch those, which is to flash kind of boil or steam. Um, it, we're going to do it for two to three minutes. All right. So mine to three minutes, give them a little, little extra time. And basically what that should do is it should turn them a really bright green, and they should still be pretty crunchy. They should have just a little bit um, of bend to them when they come out, like slightly tender. So they shouldn't be like mushy or anything. They should still retain some crispness. This is me soft chopping. I noticed on the other one, it's kind of hard for people to hear you sometimes. I want to make sure y'all can hear her at home. That's ah. really funny. People usually do not have a problem hearing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> You're designed to be heard. That's how I was built, to be heard. I was in chorus when I was younger, and they oh, taught us to project. That's so. right. That's why I like that. <laughs> chorus. Ooh, what do you sing? I should have known. It's Nashville. Of course she sings. Oh, Thank no, God. no. It was all... You were born in Nashville. I know you must have sung. It was She's all... like, I don't know any music. You know every instrument. It's you play piano. It's either hymns all or um, really bad 80s, like, love ballads. It's so horrible. Like, no. <laughs> so, like, a mix of Johnny Cash and Billy Ray Cyrus. I got you. Okay. We're, tra we're tracking. We're tracking. But further back than that. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> do we have to do anything to just green beans? Oh, I bet we have to uh, add them. salt. <laughs> you already salted the water. I know, but I'm just saying, I bet that's the next instruction. Not yet. Mm. We're then going to remove them from the water and then they're done. Awesome. So I finally chopped these. I'm now going to cut my pile in half. And this half will become the paste, at which point I'll kind of smash it a good bit using the flat purpose of this knife. Make sure you have a good knife. Don't put a lot of pressure on it. You know, obviously be aware of your age. That's why I like these big ones. Yeah, kind of give it a slap. And you can see it, all the oils and everything starting to come out. I give it a little bit more chop just to kind of put some separation in there and get the stuff that's off the side. That's all the good in. Give it a little bit more. Mm, there we go. So this is this. And I think we add this to the mayonnaise, don't we? Uh, I believe the, the paste does go in the mm -hmm. mayonnaise. Let's look right quick. As much of the garlic paste as you'd like, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and just add that in there. Boom. It's another thing I like about having the cutting board on the table. I can just kind of slide it where I want. I like that. Which I guess I can just slide it off the table too. But I'm trying to be interesting, y'all. Does anything else go in this? Do we have any salt and pepper? It. Nothing? Um, you could probably add salt and pepper. I'm sure they give you the option. They always do. Yeah, season with salt and pepper. So. They say that a lot. So it's very predictable. Ooh. Yeah, and this I never the, do because I don't love adding salt. So. That's the blanche. The, right. um, where's our? Oh, here it oh, is. Oh, actually, we're not going to dump that water out. So I know we're not. Of, oh, I see. So you, I see what you're saying. She's right. So I'm reaching for the wrong thing. We're going to get a plate and line up with paper towels because the next place we put these is in oil, and we don't want them to be overly. Ah, okay. Because in case you don't know, um, that does not work out well. While she handles that, I'm going to add that salt and pepper we talked about to this aioli. And she is now blanching, no, I'm actually or removing the blanched, the... yeah, removing the now blanched, because that's what blanching is, is you get it to boil just a little bit, two, three minutes, it brightens the color. Yeah, you can see these are really mm. green, like Yummy. they just look really good. I'm very a little bit of salt them. the aioli. Not too much, or she gets upset. <laughs> you Do our protein before we put the new in. The protein won't take long. That's the thing about steaks. They're pretty simple. Once you get down the fundamentals, there's a couple. But once you get those down, man, it's not hard to make a delicious steak. Of course, you got to start with delicious ingredients. That really is the number one thing about steaks. It all comes down to it's the centerpiece on your dinner table, and it really matters those ingredients. Um, and the meal in the box that we get picks some really amazing ingredients. And, you know, Kitty's, it's a really big deal to her. She wants to make sure that the few times she eats meat, she wants to make sure that animal had some type of enjoyable existence. She doesn't want to eat meat that's injected with all these, you know, bad emotions and bad experiences or however that works. Whether it's a chemical dump in the brain or just the bad mojo of it. Mojo of it. <laughs> um, we don't want to think about that when we're eating. We want to just kind of eat and do our thing and think that maybe our meal didn't cost something its entire existence. That's a little heavy for dinner, you know? We just really try to look for places that um, have humanely raised, ethically raised animals. Um, the meal we get ours uh, yeah. from is actually, they're yes. pasture raised and they have unrestricted access to pasture, so I like that. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's one of the yeah. quality ingredients. And these green beans look so I'm now going to start getting this pan up to heat. Now, I like to sear my steak, so I'm going to set my oven at like medium high. It's number four in my oven. I don't know what it is on your oven. I'm going to put a little bit of this time, instead of olive oil, I'm going to try some of my buddy Wade's recommended olive oil. Avocado. Uh, no, avocado oil. That's me messing up my lines. <laughs> That's how that works. Normal people would edit this out, but I, I'm hoping to just find it charming. Um, but yes, avocado oil. He says it's going to add like a buttery flavor to it, so I'm kind of excited. We also, like, I love avocado. When we do brunch, mm -hmm. I'll make, like, 
David a traditional like bacon, eggs, and either French toast or pancakes or whatever, but I do like avocado toast for myself, so avocado is one of my favorite things. We be interested to see how he thinks it makes the steak turn out, whether it adds anything. All right. If you'll grab the protein, I'll get the uh, yeah. paper towels ready. This looks like good stuff. Yeah. Yes, grass fed. Mm. All right. Yes, we and no hormones or antibiotics. These um, guys. Nothing like that, so makes me happy and David has said um, that he can taste a difference too in like the meat that he oh, ate yeah. previously and then when we started buying like organic grass-fed vegetarian fed all that kind of stuff yeah even if you are just doing it based on taste like say you don't care about all that other moral stuff it tastes amazing it does it really does we're just opening um, the bag that the meat is in and getting that drained a little bit um, and then David's gonna get those on our paper towels and we're gonna get those patted dry so we can season them. Oh, those are Ooh. good steaks. Ooh, those do look good. I have mine. Oh, those look great. Do you wanna season them over here so they can see like how much you're doing of each? Because I oh. know you have like a special way to do steaks. I'm happy to move those for you. Or we can wash your hands and you can do them. Well, what I'll do is I'll hold it up and you season it. My hands are already okay. contaminated. Cause she's right. It wouldn't hurt for y'all to see this. Oh, look at those. Go ahead and put it on. Pretty much what we do is light pepper. We'll do the pepper first, very light. And we only do one side, so that's good right there. Go to the next one. Because what we'll do is this will be the first side to be seared, this will be the first side down. And I'll do the other side while it sears that one side. We'll do some salt. Yeah. Now salt is a great flavor saver on steaks. A lot of those high-end, $100 Wagyu beef steaks. Wagyu beef steaks. Talking's hard, y'all. Um, what you're paying for is the fact that Cook knows salt makes steak delicious. It just killed my heart a little to put that much salt on something <laughs> now, I know he's going to eat. Now, my next little favorite is this little steak seasoning. And everyone has their own little favorite. This is my particular favorite. Uh, it's the Montreal uh, seasoning, which I don't know what that means or whatever. And I just kind of lightly dust that on there. I'll add more as that goes, so more into that one. Lightly dust, that's it, and we're good. Oh, it looks like that. There we go. crusted. I'll come over here. I guess, Kitty, check the viscosity of that oil. We'll see if that okay. pan's ready. Because we're going to do a sear on a steak, we really want it to be, ooh, it's close. So Let's I've never worked there. with avocado oil before, but that is, like, really liquidy. I'd say you're probably close, right? All right, we'll see. The, uh, and what I'll do is two minutes per side. Starting out. It, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, this <laughs> is for the sear. This is for the sear. So if you'll set the clock. Two okay. minutes. One, two. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's me rhyming. One, two, thank you. You see oh. that? You're a poet and you didn't know it. I think maybe I knew it. Well, I mean, you pointed it out, so. Oh, look at this. Perfect. Oh, these smell delicious. So now that the steaks are on, what's our next step with this pot of water? So. Is it gnocchi time? No. No? <laughs> because the gnocchi only takes two to three minutes. Ah. To, to boil, to do its thing. Okay. And then okay. we have to put it in that pan. So we have to do the steak in that pan. Then we have to do the green beans and shallot in that pan, remove those then it will be available for the gnocchi. There's so many <laughs> steps ahead. <laughs> That's why I was looking at the gnocchi recipe now, again. Gnocchi now, gnocchi now. If we wow. had two saute pans, um, we could get some of this going simultaneously, um, but right now we're just working with the one. So. Well, for the video too, we kind of want to do too much at once, just so people can kind of like track along. So, you know, it's, low, it's no pressure. Ooh, there we go. Except for when the alarms are going off. Go, 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 go. <laughs> That's the first two minutes on that Ooh. steak sear. Ooh. And I did. You know, of course, I BS a little bit, and I gotta put my little seasoning on this side. Light pepper. I just twitch that oil around a little bit. And there's Flip. definitely. Oh, and that's your first sear. Look at that guy. <laughs> there's oh. definitely still oil in there, so. Oh, yeah. Steaks, depending on the amount of fat they have, will provide a lot of their own sustenance. Now, I put that avocado oil in there, too. And I'm interested to see, like, how much that burns off compared to olive oil. But look at that sear. That turned out right. So I don't wanna be messing it up by holding it off the heat too long. Let's get that back on there. Timer going. Timer going. Those Ooh, those good, are gonna be oh <laughs> yeah. Pavlov's response, you know. You yeah. hear the dinner bell. Now you start to salivate. I smell the steak. I start to salivate. I'd probably jack that science up. I'm not good at science. No, I think that was right. He, was it? He, was he it? would ring a bell every time the dog ate, and eventually the dog would salivate. Neil deGrasse, like, oh. reach out to me. Neil and deGrasse Tyson. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to make friends. Trying to make friends. My mom said, don't hang out with the, you know, she's like, find the people that are good at what they do. She's like, because you're going to need their advice. <laughs> you're going to need their help. I think my mom was just really, really aware of my uphill, both ways trajectory. 
<laughs> I think you are. She's like, you're going to need the kind of people that are really smart because you're going to come up with problems that are just going to blow some folks' minds. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You do come up with some uh, some very interesting Ooh, look at this. hypotheses. So this is about a minute left. When this year is done, I'm going to take that heat down. Um, so that's we've already done it. For, once this is done, we have done it for four minutes. We've got six minutes left. We'll take that down to almost a three or pretty much just a medium. So from medium high to medium. And we'll cook that, stirring it, not stirring it, flipping it occasionally um, till that other six minutes is fire. So it's pretty much ten minutes. I get four to sear, two and two, and then the other six minutes just to kind of flip back and forth, depending on how much you like your steak. The, um, a lot of people know this, I don't like to use the puncture thermometers because it releases all these juices, especially with a steak. Chicken, maybe. Um, one of the things I've always done is just the hand method. If you like it raw, and some people do, on for three count, three count plate, feel right here. That's what that should feel like. And you just kind of put your hand to it. Seems weird, but it's not that hot. See how soft that is? So that's still pretty, got a little bit to go. You know, and of course it does, we've just put it on. If you want it uh, rare, hit these two fingers and it feels, you feel it with this hand. That's what that should feel like. And you just keep going up. This is about medium, and this would be well done. What that feels like right there. Oh, there we go. It's done. <laughs> now, this time I do want to BS a little bit and kind of get it off the heat. I'm gonna turn this down to three. Go for the little bit of low and slow method. You can actually see on the ends here, that steak is still pretty blue in the middle. Oh, absolutely. It looks delicious on the outside. Yeah. Some people like it that way. Some mm -hmm. people do. Um, when I go to a restaurant or something, it depends. I always ask, like, how long has the cook been here? Like, is that guy, is this what he does? Or is this his side hustle? You know what I mean? Which is fine, but it tells me different things. I know if this is your main thing, this is your passion, this is your calling, that food's just going to be better. Um, from root to toot, it's going to have someone who knows how to nurture all those fundamentals. And the fundamentals are basically getting a good sear, not puncturing the meat, and starting with a very, very good ingredient. Good meat leads to a good steak. And I know y'all already knew that, I just want to sound fancy. Mm -mm -mm. So now I'm holding it off the heat a little bit, letting it cool down, because that eye is still going to be a little bit hot. Um, and pretty much, ooh, they smell so good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hope that's coming off on camera. <laughs> All right, now I'll set it again for another two minutes. And we'll just keep going on that. So three sets of two. This time to trap the moisture in, I'm gonna uh, put the shields up, put the lid on it. Boom. Shields up. What's our next step? So we really can't do nothing till that, can we? Nope. Well, all right, all right. What did you tell us about? I was wondering, did we run through all our little talking points? Have we run out of talkie talkie? I think we might have, yeah. All right, Dave, on this one, we're going to do a little cut. We're going to do some fast-forward action. <laughs> Dave's our editor. Thank you, Dave, for all the Thanks, things you Dave. do for us. We love you. If you like the way our videos look, it's mostly because of him. Um, <laughs> it was up to me. It'd just be a bunch of random photos and a flip book I just mailed people. They'd be like, what is this? I'd be like, just flip it. Like and share. They're like, get out of my house. Um, <laughs> so thank you, Dave. We appreciate all the magic you do editing and putting everything together for us and making it look like the awesome show that it has become. Um, we're going to take a little bit of break, and we will be back. Welcome back. We took a little break to kind of time warp this a little bit. And also have an excuse to give kudos to our boy Dave. Oh, there's the seasoning. Not the seasoning. There's the alarm for the don't burn your house down device we buy. Oh, that moisture just in there. Now, we've already flipped it once, so this is the final flip. So if you'll set that for two minutes again. Yep. The final flip. Okay. Oh, so good. And and look how thick. These pieces of meat are. Mm. Mm. They do look really good. My mama said you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but I can tell this will be a good read. Mm. <laughs> Putting that cover back on. Oh, that's going to be spectacular. I'm kind of eager to start on the other stuff. I'm going to go ahead and get this guy open because that's going to be a little bit of a thing. This is potato ganoshi. Now, doesn't ganoshi also come in other stuff, or is it always potatoes? Um, yeah, like I said at the beginning of the show, um, when I've done it, it's been potatoes. I've made it from scratch from potato um, one time, a very long time ago. They can also be made of semolina, um, whole wheat flour, breadcrumbs, eggs, cheese. Um, it's just kind of a little dumpling um, that has been boiled for two to three minutes, uh, and then... I guess it's good to go. Like, don't quote me on that. That's not a recipe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but 
but we've got some here that's pre-made. Uh, and from what I remember of making it, um, you know, pre-made is fine. It's It was not a world of difference. Uh, oh, have you made actual fresh gnocchi? Yes, it's also pronounced oh. gnocchi, um, which Gerald David has made up gnocchi. his own gnocchi. word for. <laughs> it's like a gnocchi. But if you need mm. to know how to spell it to Google it, his way is uh, much Shiny more helpful. Shiny gnocchi. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning to these steaks, sprinkle it as we go. To this point, I have not added any other. This is that time I knew I would add some. It's on this final bit. And that's because when you're flipping the steaks, it just falls off. You know, and I really like this seasoning, so I like it to be a little bit heavy. It's going to be kind of dominant. Some people say a good steak doesn't need seasoning, doesn't need sauce. I say it just comes down to who's ordering it. Some people like different things. Sometimes I want to just taste nothing but the meat, but sometimes I want all the stuff. I'll season it, flavor it, get A1, ketchup, and wash. Ooh! And that is the steak. Mmm, yummy. And so, like I said, you know, raw is an open palm. Rare is, or no, rare is right here. Like this. And I kind of like mine right about here. You know, so do your hand like that. Do your hand like that, kitty. And I'm going to feel right there. That's the second one or the third one? The third one, your middle finger. Your middle finger. Oh, so I guess that is your second <laughs> video. From what direction you're counting, she's looking true, one way, true, I'm looking true. another. Ooh, mmm. Oh, delicious. Does delicious. it feel exactly like my hand? Not exactly. <laughs> There's a little bit of differences, you know? Um, I'm going to kind of make a little room here. So you can see these beautiful pieces of meat. Oh, yes. These are going to be fantastic. Boom. Oh. Read my mind. Read my mind. Sometimes I'm helpful. Not sometimes. She's helpful. She my rock. She my Sean Connery escape from a prison type. There you go. Mm. And he's mine. All right. So now we have the fawn. I like to scrape that up a little bit. And again, the fawn, I think we explained possibly in the last episode, maybe the one before. Um, it's just what's left over after you've cooked the meat in there. So the seasoning, the juices, all that kind of stuff. What are we adding now, the shallots? So what goes into the pan first, I think David, Gerald David is right. I think it's going to be the shallots. It kind is. Of separating them in layers. Olive oil, reserve fawn, sliced shallot. Do you want to continue with the avocado oil? Yeah. Or do you want to? Okay. Yeah, because I don't know what it's going to be like if we mix it. Yeah. Because we started with this and we're not going to wipe the pan, I'm going to continue with this. Yeah, if we were going to wipe the pan, it probably wouldn't matter. You'd probably mix it up a little bit. We're going to keep that butterly. Butter. Butterly. I like that butterly. Right? Butterly. Butterly. I like butterly. Right? Can I just invent a word? Yeah. Buttery. He does butterly. all the time. Well, you can't trademark someone else's word. So you might as well just make up your own. And if it catches, man, make t-shirts. You trademark that thing. <laughs> I mean, don't be all, you know, too bully about it. Let people be a little bit like Bill Murray. You know, one of the things that made him an icon is the fact that he doesn't sue you for using his image. So if you want to put his face on a candle or a billboard, the man lets you. And if you make five dollars, he don't care. That's what makes him an icon. That's why you go in traffic and you're like, I was passed by five Bill Murrays. <laughs> and that's weird, right? No one else. Very few other people have their just image just plastered places. Um, so I kind of like that. Put this on. How uh, long do we set the timer for? I want to say it's going to be two to three minutes. Um, oh, actually one to two. So it's already set for two. Perfect. So. We're going to check that it too because I feel like that pan has come down quite a bit. A little bit, but it's still pretty warm. Okay. It's we'll pretty check it warm. And once the shallots are done, we're going to mm. add the green beans to oh, those. Oh, green beans is next. Okay. What's the time on that? Another one, another one to two minutes. Okay. So we got green beans for two minutes, shallot for two minutes. Or reverse that. Shallots for ten minutes. Am I saying that right? Shallots. Shallots, yes. Not like a chalet in the mountains. No, that's all fancy and swanky. They're spelled very differently. Mm. I'm going to munch on this a little bit. I'm going to munch on this a little bit. These green beans are tasty. I don't really, I'm really picky about my green beans. Um, I definitely like them more as I get older. When I was young, you couldn't pay me five dollars to eat a green bean. I had an affinity against seeds. Mm. Now I realize they're tasty. When do we add the garlic? What does the rest of that garlic get added to? So the garlic, I think it's going to go in with the gnocchi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the capers, so, garlic, and red pepper flakes will go in with the gnocchi, which I'm really excited about. We can probably go ahead and start on the gnocchi. It'll be pretty close, because we've got a minute left on that. So we start boiling that water again? It'll be close, yeah. We'll definitely get that boiling, for sure. Because that's the no, first we step. We forget about water a lot. <laughs> yeah. This water is now going to be turned back. This is what we previously used to blanch the green beans. So it still has some of those nutrients and some of that magic green, green bean goodness in there. 
So we're going to put that back up to boiling. Let that start to get going. The shallots are... Not shallots. Shallots. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. Now I'm getting self-conscious of it. Like, you know, have you ever said a word to yourself like 20 times, and then no matter what you say, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd time, sounds like gibberish. You're like, zebra. Zebra. Zebra? Zebra? Like, what? Yeah, you can convince yourself. I can convince myself mm. that I no longer know how to oh. spell very small and simple words. Oh, and happens. I will have to Google it <laughs> to you make don't sure. Use it, you lose it. This is a fact in life. It is. Right. Oh, like, I know that's right, but it, I still, when I look at it, I, like, can't convince mm. myself that it's correct. Oh. So, Google tells so me this it. is those. So now we add the green beans. All right. So let's get those in there. The green beans. To the green beans. And I'm guessing you can probably season with salt and pepper. Oh, I'm sure. I'm gonna say that I'd be surprised if they didn't there. say season with salt and pepper. Oh, it's the next one. Season with salt and pepper. <laughs> I may not be able to remember it, but I can anticipate it. That's I'm right. better at it anyway. Well, they just know a lot of it gets burnt off in the cooking process. Also, people love salt. They do. They know it. They know it. And these meals are already pretty healthy. This is already you making good choices. You don't have to line it. You know, whatever various, you know, fast food or whatnot. You know, you're already making good choices. So don't feel like you have to make all the good choices. You know what I mean? You're allowed to have a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I think a lot of people jump out of diets and such because they go too extreme. You can ease into some stuff. I will tell you, though, uh, one funny story about my sibling. Timer. He, yes. Set timer for two minutes. There we go. He went into the army. Um... Our, my mom never added salt to anything she made. She didn't cook a whole lot, but when she did, she did not add season like salt to it. Um, so he went into the army and he starts using salt because it's on the mess hall. And he said, once I figured out how great it was, I just put it on everything. He ended up having to go to the infirmary because his boots were not fitting correctly. And they told him that his feet had literally swollen so big um, because he had eaten so much salt that he had to cut back on the salt in his She diet. tried to be healthy, but she didn't prepare him <laughs> for the world outside those doors. There comes a point where it's like, all right, this is what the real world's going to bring you. But it's funny, salt. Because I can imagine <laughs> yeah. if you never had it, if you had never had it before, could you, man, it blow my mind. Uh, apparently, it oh. blew his, yeah. <laughs> That's like when you find out there's good mac and cheese. Remember your whole right. little, your little life when you're all down here and such. And you, you know, you're happy with your mac and cheese. Your mac and cheese is a good part of your life, right? It's yummy. And then one day, you're at somebody else's house, and their mama's mac and cheese, man, it don't look like mine. It look a little different. It's hard to tell. You know what I mean? I'm looking, I'm like, hmm. Smells a little different. So from around the corner, you can tell something different. Like, I thought we were having mac and cheese. This is, what is it? This is pasta. This is, the shells. That sauce is creamy. It didn't come from some type of weird powder that looked like the Cheeto, you know, uh, leopard dude I, had been uh, disintegrated. I sincerely <laughs> love how much thought you have put into this. Oh, man. Like, that makes me so happy because this is all true. Like, I uh, go through this thought process, but I don't usually break it down to my. I'm a mac and cheese this. snob, y'all. There's a piece of my heart. In the bottom of the Arnold's mac and cheese. What pan. happened but, when um, you tasted that other oh. person's mom's mac and cheese? One, I was like, how dare you? She should have sent my mom a letter, gave her some warning. That just ain't fair. That's like a little ambush. Because my mama, man, from that moment on, she couldn't have that other mac and cheese. I couldn't, I couldn't take it. Once I had known how good the other mac and cheese was. Oh. Wow. <laughs> there we go. That's impressive. So hats off to the better mac and cheese people out there. Be dedicated. You don't have to make all the money. You know, you make a little bit of money. I'm all about moral capitalism. Make some money, but, you know, don't be a dick about it. All right, we're going to pull all of this out and just transfer it to either, uh, I guess, the plates. You can yeah. go ahead and plate it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that, y'all. And, again, we're not going to wipe the pan out or anything. We're, right. um But we are going to take it off the heat for just a minute because we've got to cook that gnocchi. We forgot to put it in. But the water is oh. boiling now, so. Well, that's what we were waiting on. Yeah. They just started boiling. You can go ahead and put that in there while okay. I plate this. I'm just going to break it up a little bit in the package because it's gotten a little bit, um, it's very oh, yeah. tight in there and I don't want it to all cook in like a clump. No, that makes sense. There's those green beans. That looks delicious, y'all. This is going to be fantastic. All right. Are we done with this pan or is more going into it? Uh, more goes into it. So another way oh. to tell, it says you can do the gnocchi for two to three minutes. You can boil it. Another way to tell that gnocchi is done is it starts floating up to the surface. So two to oh, three yeah. minutes, um, most of it should have floated up to the surface. And, you know, it should be relatively tender, even though they are kind of dense. So, like I said, don't expect it to be like regular pasta. 
And we still have our, we have our remaining three ingredients that will go into the pan of fond with the gnocchi once it's finished, which are capers, our chopped garlic, and our crushed red pepper flakes. Oh, oh we have like whole capers. chopped and crushed. We have like yeah. three. All the things. Look, I can even kind of, boom, I'm going to mix this guy up a little bit. And we've got our aioli, which is technically for, for the steak. I think. Oh, is that what that's for? Yeah. A little mm -hmm. topper for the steak? A little topper, topper. Put it right, right there. Boom. What do we got? About a minute 56. Now, I know you were reading up on the capers because I heard something like these come from a bush. Like, what is this? <laughs> yes. But so, these are grown. I did not know that about these little things. Capers actually, um, they come from a caper bush is what I was reading. Um, and Not the seeds for future baby Yodas. I Googled it. Or super villains. Get it? Caper bush? Okay, anyway. <laughs> I like so, that. I like that. These are That's wonderful. the, um, typically they're pickled, and it's the fruit and fla uh, flower bud, edible flower bud of the caper bush. So I love them. Like, I would have sworn they had something to do with the ocean because they have so captured its essence in a tiny, small pod. I sincerely love them. Um, not everyone feels that way, so they could be a divisive flavor. <laughs> I bet you can make some awesome mac and cheese with gnocchi. I bet you could. Is that a thing? Has anyone ever done mac and cheese with... I have not heard of it. So that might be it. a special. Be on the lookout for that. That might be on the experimental episodes. Ooh, are we done with this guy? I'll give that a little pre-wash. What do you think about bacon gnocchi mac and cheese? It'd be Ooh. like loaded baked potato mac and cheese. Oh, the yummy. gnocchi is the potato and then cheese oh, and would. bacon. That and is what it would be like. Yeah. Oh, Sometimes we invent things here. Hashtag that's trademarked. And y'all, <laughs> if y'all want to experiment, <laughs> if y'all want to experiment, let us know how it goes. Put your recipes below. We're always collecting. We're yes. always looking for recipes. And let us know how awesome it tastes because like that just sounds really good. <laughs> and that is that starting to float to the top? A little bit, it is. Okay, it's hard to show y'all, but it is starting to float. There's just so much mm. foam from the water boiling that it's really there hard is. to see in there, but they are floating. Well, and out. I make sure too that they're not stuck to each other and kind of get in there and make sure that water circulates a little bit. Yeah, it's not going to hurt them to stir them a little bit or whatever. Mm. And you definitely don't want a giant clump going in and then just sitting there congealing. Into a potato bowl. Remix. All right, so that is done. We will do we drain, drain this? those. Yes. Drain it or drain it? Do I get rid of the water? Or do we need it for something else? No, we don't need the water for anything. Um, go ahead and return that pan to the eye also, right. and that can heat up while you strain them. Do I need to put some type of oil in this? Um, a little bit. Right, a drizzle. A drizzle of the As avocado always, oil. A drizzle. Mm, and we're sticking drizzle. with the avocado oil because mm -hmm. we started with it, so it's going to be an avocado oil kind of night. Um, you have a little bit of leniency. I guess not a little bit of time to figure out, but a little time on each side of things. You're not going to ruin it if you're a little bit of late to it. No, that's very true. You could probably do it for several more minutes before it would truly be like inedible. Uh, you know, also, I'm not off super. By a or so it's not the biggest deal. I'm not super picky, so I may not be the best one to trust on that. Because um, all it does is get a little bit soft. But yeah, you yeah. don't want to overdo it. But yeah, you got a little bit of grace on each side. And those are looking very good. He's just tossing them to make sure they're drained thoroughly mm -hmm. and that they're not sticking to one another. And then what do we do with this? We're going to throw those in the pan. Of oh, pond. Yes. And we're going to add the garlic capers and crushed red pepper flakes. And we're going to cook them for one to two minutes. Two to three minutes. Like that. Actually, you're gonna we're going to cook them without stirring in an even layer for two to three minutes. First? And then, yeah. And then we'll add the other items and cook them again for one to two minutes. It's hard to get them even the alien. They send us quite a lot, which is, you know, good. Yeah, that's very awesome. good. So just do your best. It doesn't have to be 100%. Sometimes it doesn't have really room. Kitty might give it a better shot. I'll come conquer the cleaning so we don't get behind on it. Thank you. We do try to be clean as you go, and I did not clean that. Well, we want this to be realistic to a degree. Um, so we don't want to undermine and just be like there's magic kitchen elves that show up and clean everything. No, nope, it's us. If you have magic kitchen elves, send them our way because I would be fine with that. Oh, that would be awesome. It's not because we don't want magic kitchen elves that we don't have that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Even people employed is powerful. It's powerful. Absolutely. Let people do what they love. My dad used Something to have that. his favorite Christmas sweatshirt was Free the Elves. Yeah. He would wear it every year. He loved that sweatshirt. <laughs> Get that going, boom boom. He was an elf mm -hmm. rights activist, my father. An elf rights <laughs> activist. How does he know that they weren't fully union? Those guys might have been, you know, 
well taken care of. All the snow. What? How does anyone know that they are fully used? Never seen them. He was uh, taking a stand. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. The, um, what do we got coming up next? Uh, so once that has gone for mm. a couple of minutes, got about a minute and a half left on that. Oh, we're gonna add it. our. It so bad. <laughs> we're gonna add our pickled flower buds. Um, we're going to add our garlic that's chopped up, and we're gonna add our crushed red pepper flakes. Mm. It always says like add as many as you would like, depending on how spicy you'd like the dish to be. Like you might have some left over. Um, we never have any left over. We always no, have not really. Them. Yeah. We love spicy. Not just for the sake of spicy, but like, yeah. Well, you get a lot of good nutrients, and it helps clear out your sinuses and everything. Um, I just really like it. I love jalapenos, and they're a good uh, source of vitamin C. Yeah. At least jalapenos are. Um, red Wait. pepper flakes, what kind of vitamins are in these? What's in this? I have Ooh. no idea. Tell us below. Agent McKamey. me. <laughs> But I will tell you with the jalapenos, um, mm. so when I oh, start good. to get sick, like that if I'm starting good. to get a cold or something, I make honey lemon tea. Um, and typically it is just hot water, lemon juice, like local honey, and then sometimes I'll add whiskey depending on whether I'm getting chest congestion or not. Um, and then I also add like microplaned garlic, cayenne pepper, um, and I think that's it. I don't think I have any other weird ingredients, but it's enough that my daughter looks at me like I'm crazy, but it really does work. So we used to be like oh, a tea amazing. family. Mm -hmm. Now we're a tea and nachos family because the jalapenos have so many vitamins that we find a reason to eat those mm -hmm. as well as drink the tea to like really pack that immune boost. So it now we do like yeah. nachos with tons of jalapenos <laughs> and tea. So now we're going to add the garlic. Yes, which is here. Yeah. Try and slide that guy. Oh, thank oh, you. There thank you. Go. you. Teamwork, oh, teamwork, <laughs> boom. So we got our garlic, we're gonna add our capers. Capers, sprinkle those kind of in there. the ocean. And then our mm. crushed red pepper flakes. And we like it all, so no mercy, no mercy. And then what, uh, what, what timer do we put these That's on? That's gonna be one to two minutes. I'm gonna right. reset the six to, and we're gonna stir that continuously. Can we throw a little bit more oil in here? Yes. It is sticking, it seems that burned through it pretty good. Mm. So we just did a drizzle. Mm -hmm. That's all we ever do. If you watch the show, everything is a drizzle. Everything is a drizzle. <laughs> it's just a drizzle of oil here, a dash of salt and pepper Even there. Even when they give me a measurement, I like I just use a drizzle. It's like, just a drizzle. It's always just a drizzle. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fantastic. I'm very excited. Oh. And so boom. I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek. So it's turning out to look like you see the pepper flakes, you garlic a little you bit. You can also um, season those with salt and pepper if desired. Well, you know I desire. <laughs> the other thing that's important about the cooking of the steak, and I just realized this because it's an instruction, because ours came off so early, it's been doing it automatically, but it's for the meat to be rested. So you want the steak to sit without cutting it for at least five minutes after you pull it off of the pan. And all that does yep. is let the juices that have like, been brought out during the cooking in the meat reabsorb. So if you cut it right as it comes off, all of those juices are gonna flow out and your meat is gonna end up being dry. Yeah. Um, you wanna make sure that you rest it so those juices reabsorb and that gives you a nice moist piece of meat. And that's just about five minutes after you pull it off. If you rest it for five minutes, it should be good to go. Mm -hmm. We don't actually pre-slice ours. We like cut as you go. So it's not really an issue for us, but if you do pre-slice, if you're doing like a presentation plate. Mm -hmm. That's um, right then that's something to consider. You want a fancy date? You got someone to impress? <laughs> Presentation, they like it. Make it look like TV. Shows your craft. And when we first started doing these meals, it was so cute because Gerald David would be like, he would plate them exactly like the, the picture, pictures. Yep. And they were gorgeous. I mean, I would take them to work and everybody would be like, oh my gosh, I wish I could cook like that. They looked amazing. And they still look pretty amazing. I'm usually, I still, if it's me plating them, I try and keep it pretty close. Like I'll look, especially if they layer something on top, as opposed to side to side, I'll make note of that. Oh, That's very go. true, he always wants to see the picture, to so copy it. Boom, boom, all right. Mm -hmm. All the things are off, I like to, I like to check that. Oh, get can those, I'm so sorry, you? yeah. No, no, you're fine. There's a little room for this guy right there. I was talking instead oh, of No, I, I like listening <laughs> to you talk. Oh. It's one of my favorite things. So sweet. Um, Alex um, this all one's all. gonna be mine. Do you okay. want more gnocchi? Uh, maybe a little bit. That's awesome. Because they gave you. us quite a bit. Yeah, that is that's a lot. And I love it. It's quite flavorful too. 
I'm super excited about it. This is looking gorgeous. Look at that guy. Oh. Mm. This, boom. Do you mind uh, doing okay. the aioli? I love Absolutely. aioli. So don't scam. I loves it. So yeah. I'm just going to double check that that does go on the steak. I'm almost positive. Oh, it does. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, I could just see myself put it on there and then be like, um, that's not what that was supposed to go on. So. Garlic, aioli, and steak is a long home condition. Condition. Tradition. <laughs> Garlic and steak might be a condition. It might be. Um, everyone's got their own version. Usually they call it a Louisiana something or whatnot. Um, it is delicious. I cannot, man. Ooh. I'm getting over here, but I'm making myself be good. Doing my dishes before. Obviously, the aioli is like to your taste. We usually leave the bowl out on the table because I'm obsessed with anything with a cream sauce, and then yep. we can like go on as whatever. But we'll just oh, start yeah, out with a little bit. Add to it to your preferences. With this guy. Yeah, and just know that like that's typically not all that was in there. Like if you can't tell, there's still some in the bowl. So. Gerald David is making short work of this. Um, mm -hmm. When I saw that pan after the gnocchi, our oil had evaporated while it was sitting in an even layer a little bit. Um, so it it's, uh, it's like taking some manly arm muscle. I'll put this guy back. To, uh, that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> she has it a little bit. I have muscle. She has it a little bit. Manly arm muscle, which is Ooh. awesome. Uh, in our case, it happens to not be the same thing. It's hot. So. Did you? <laughs> it is. All right, y'all. Places, Kitty. Here's yours. Oh, thank you. Is that yeah? Was yours? Yep, yep. Here's this one. This looks amazing. Oh, seared steak uh, with garlic aioli and gnocchi. Crispy gnocchi, crispy gnocchi, and sautéed green beans. Oh, I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons.